welcome to Mimamsa Perspectives. Mimamsa Foundation for Indic Studies is a forum where we attempt to study, understand and research aspects about India, which are integral to study India comprehensively. At Mimamsa, we have developed a four pillar template to study and research India. And the four pillars are Vidnana, Darshana, Itihasa and Sambhasha, which individually study aspects related to India's scientific and knowledge systems, India's spiritual, philosophical and religious traditions, India's history and India's socio-political and economic realities. And we do that through well-researched articles, interviews, podcasts, and interaction with eminent personalities. In the same endeavor today, we have with us a very special guest. We have with us Dr. G. G. Gangadharan. He is currently director of Ramaya Indic Speciality Ayurveda Restoration Hospital. He has been a champion of Ayurveda for past three and a half decades and has authored numerous research papers, articles, primary papers, and has also authored six books. He has a master's degree from McGill University in Montreal, Canada, and he is also the recipient of prestigious Ashoka Innovators for Public Fellowship. He has also received his PhD from Tirak Maharashtra Vidyapit, which is in Pune. An occasion for today's discussion is his recent book, uh, which is Ayurveda, titled Ayurveda, True Way to Restore Your Health and Happiness, which is this. Uh, it is a book which sort of initiates a, a, an individual to the world of Ayurveda. So if you are a person who is completely unaware of what Ayurveda really is, so by the time you are on the last page of this book, you would probably be aware of what Ayurveda, what Ayurvedic philosophy is, what is the way of Ayurvedic treatment, and the reason why it continues to endure even after 5,000 years and more. It is a treasure for those who want to really understand this book, and we are thankful to uh, Dr. Gangadharan to actually write this book. Uh, so thank you, Doctor, for uh, writing this wonderful book. Congratulations for it. Uh, and thank you for joining us today also. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be with you. So uh, I want to begin with uh, the first question. And uh, in your book, you sort of begin with that this book is not really a defense of Ayurveda, but rather it's a champion for, for a science which has endured for almost 5,000 years. It doesn't require defense, but it actually uh, it requires champions. But I want to sort of begin from there. While I agree with the fact that uh, it doesn't need to be defended in, in that particular context, but we are also living in time when Ayurveda is also seen on one hand as a pseudoscience, to other hand as an alternative medicine or alternative treatment with something which you do not uh, agree with you also in you say that in your book. It is also a time when people are too uh, en enamored by the, uh, you know, the developments in the modern science. And that sort of becomes a template of what science really is. So in these times, do you think Ayurveda also needs a strong defense in, in a way that it stands to the scrutiny uh, in one sense and also to sort of create an ecosystem where Ayurveda regains its glory? Uh, so in a way, your book also is, is an effort in that. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, what I what I meant by that is that sorry, what I meant by that is that uh, what Ayurveda you see today is uh, only tip of the iceberg. We want to explore more of Ayurveda. We have to understand more of Ayurveda. So it needs champions. We want to take Ayurveda to the next level of its uh, possibilities of applications. So, and uh, we don't have to compete with the modern biomedical science, which is highly reductionistic in nature, to compare the scientificity of Ayurveda. The, I believe the test of the pudding is in eating. So if Ayurveda can prove its own way, its own scientific base, which has done for 5,000 years, you champion it, you take it to further level, then all the other science will follow you, rather than you are going to go behind them and please accept me as a science. It's not needed at this point of time. It's a clinical science. Clinical science only should be evidence-based based on the its its uh, effect in the patients. So that has, we have we have been showing it. So 
what i meant by that is that we need more champions today who knows ayurveda and who get attracted to ayurveda who study the scientific basis of ayurveda ayurveda itself as all of you know it's a praman shastra right without any pramana ayurveda don't accept any concept so pratyaksha uh, anumana yukti upamana and shabda this pramanas are being the base foundation of ayurveda so this has to be further explored by our own way and we should make our own niche area of right. this uh, evidence creation right. uh, to reach to uh, more people right and uh, interestingly why i asked this question was because in your book also uh, you uh, narrate a very interesting uh, incidents when you know the the ayurved which is based on the prakriti and dosha which sort of is the edifice of ayurvedic treatment that itself was not uh, accepted for mm-hmm. long and the moment it got published in the nature uh, you were one of the authors of that seminal paper and, and then it was when after people started accepting okay this is also uh, right so uh, if if may not defense in that conventional sense but you probably require um, publishing the ayurvedic vaidyas actually coming out publishing more and sort of creating that uh, system where it also gets the uh, the same say which it deserves So that's what i thought i thought that's what i mean this right. all concept of ayurveda biology mm-hmm. is based on ayurvedic principles right. can be translated to the modern scientific language mm-hmm. or can be equated that this nature paper is one of that examples that how it is possible to explain ayurveda's thing in modern modern biomedical terms which they understand so they they have no doubt now that is the dynamic base for prakriti and prakriti is the basic foundation of ayurveda so this we have but that is not only the way what i mean is one of the means others should also do it because we have been doing it it is a outcome of eight years of work of more than 30 people and uh, more than five institutions continuously working on that and going through 3500 people analyzing their blood taking their dna out finding out the rna in institution so many things happen but that is a very gigantic so how long you will do that is also needed so that that right. modern science should open their eyes and see there is science in this right. but if you want to do a basic work again you have to go to the roots of ayurveda you have to go to the panch mahabhuda principles rudashi principles all those things you have to go to the darshanic foundations then from the darshanic foundation only ayurveda or any indian science emerges so i don't deny the need of this correlation bridging integration that is my area of work also Right. but what i mean is that is not the only thing one should be doing that is only one aspect just to make sure that ayurveda is get into the bandwagon of modern science right right but that alone that that may attract more people to get into ayurveda western science may get interested right that is a, to me it is a lateral growth my uh, my perpendicular growth the straight growth is when you go to the foundations of ayurveda right. because that only can take ayurveda to the next level so i am somewhere in my book i am telling about three levels of ayurveda knowledge hmm. one is the tattva second one is the shastra third one is the vyavahara hmm. vyavahara is what you see in ayurveda today vyavahara is the uh, practice practical uh, application of ayurveda in certain given circumstances treating some people and all that hmm. shastra is the science behind that Right. Tattva is the original roots of Ayurveda. Tattva is known only to few. The founders of Ayurveda, like Susruta, Charaga, Vakpada, they are the Tattva Knyas. They know the Tattva of Ayurveda. Mm-hmm. But people like me, to some level, may be Shastra Knyas. We know the Shastra behind that. Right. But we are not reached to that level of Tattva. Tattva, to reach to that level, we have to have the Aptha Sarubam. Aptha means the Nadastama Abhyanarmukto, Tabo Knyana Balena Ye, Satyam Vakshindye, that kind of a mindset we were completely devoid of tamas and rajas in our their mind where the truth reflects and truth comes and appears that is a that is the level in which ayurveda actually originally came into existence right right so i i what i am telling here is that is a different paradigm of science which people may not accept today but this lateral thing which i correlated the prakriti with the genome mm-hmm. or the 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 microbiome and the uh, cost of prakriti these are things people will understand from the vyavahara level so if you have this multitude of action then ayurveda will get into the real scientific stream yes i think what you point out is very true in fact while reading your book also 
uh, one thing that comes out very stark is that the the nature of ayurveda itself is very different uh, in a sense that it it, it is uh, one of the most important thing which was that you also mentioned that how ayurveda uh, bases itself from the fact that individual and nature are the unity of individual and nature and how that symbiosis is the key to understand ayurveda which is very different from the conventional science as we see can you can you tell us more on that because you know uh, while reading ayurveda i understand i realize that you, know, you if if at all you have to analyze ayurveda you also have to first understand the basics of ayurveda also uh, to be able to make and i think it stems from the fact that it is a separate discipline itself obviously you cannot expect to conflate the modern science and ayurveda every time and therefore the beginning should be uh, from can you explain more on this the unity of nature and individual see one of the basic things of ayurveda is yavandoho bhavaha murtimadam dehe tavando loge yavando loge tavando dehe that actually literally means that whatever there are things in the external universe the cosmos that are there in the living being in the human being whatever there is in the human being which there are in the external universe what it means is that uh, both are made of same basic elements so this panjabo panjamo panjabuda atmagam jagat sarva everything that is in the phenomenal world is made out of these five elements only the permutation combinations are different okay. so the five uh, bhudas can get into infinity number of combinations infinity number of forms so from the single celled mic as amoeba to the multi cellular human being a multi system human being are made of same element so in ayurveda thing that uh, say that that at physical level physiological level psychological level the mind the jivatma and paramatma that also is connection and the mind which is part of jivatma the mind which is the part of our existence also he is in union with the with the cosmic universe so what i meant is that uh, a physician in the given context is only a conveyor belt between the macro and the micro right. so what physician a vaidya a healer does is he is finding out or she is finding out things that are in imbalance in the body hmm. or lacking in the body being identified gets identified in the external universe that become flora fauna minerals marine things metals all those things and convert it into form that is what vaishya kalpana does eh? do that form change the dosage form and make the body imbibe it assimilate it and metabolize it make the tissue part and bring down the bring back the lost balance so that's why i told in my book heading itself restoration restoration of the lost balance is the right. job of a vaidya so the microcosm the human being and the macrocosm the universe are one and same so in every every thinking of ayurveda it is reflected hmm. and uh, this is reflected not only ayurveda if you look into any indian sciences this can be seen if you go to spiritual sciences we go to vedanta you will see if you go to vaisheshika you will see that this is there and what we say is that human life is not an end human life is actually a point or a bindu or a <coughs> dot in a long circle of its existence true it removes its outer cover and get into another another realm of uh, existence so in that short span of 100 years which is what is expected of human life to exist whatever changes that happen in the body which deteriorates its uh, balance can be corrected from the things from outside so this is the beauty of ayurveda it looks uh, sees everything in a single uh, thing so it is actually a kind of a unified theory which right. the people scientists are trying to uh, understand unified theory is, is applied applied in ayurveda yeah and i think that's why it is rightfully said that it is not just any medical pathy but it is rather a lifestyle i mean you should not wait for a, a disease to come to you it's it's a lifestyle that you can uh, imbibe and i think therefore yoga and ayurveda are also very intrinsically linked uh, in a sense yes it's very much ayurveda and yoga are siblings 
I should huh. say, I'm siblings. Uh -huh. And actually, and Ayurveda and Yoga are the two civilizational gifts that was given by India to the globe. India's contribution, India's, uh, India's presentation. And uh, Ayurveda, uh, some people say yoga starts where the Ayurveda ends. The reason for saying is that Ayurveda is more towards physical, physiological health, whereas yoga is more on mental and psychological health. Right. Both are go contributing to both areas, but the, 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 the priority, the importance is given to the other part. In Ayurveda, you see more of how to bring down uh, right. thing and yoga is giving more towards how to yoga to chitta vritti nirodha, how to uh, correct yourself, how to point your mind towards the your ultimate goal of reaching to the universal consciousness. For that, yoga you give eight kind of steps. Yama, Nima, Ahara, Yama, Nima, Asana, Prana, Samyama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyanam, Samadhi. And in that one uh, is Hatha Yoga is more being uh, projected today, understood today, practiced today. Right. Because it has got immediate results. You can see your yeah. endocrine system can be corrected, your brain waves can be corrected, your muscles can be improved, your circulation can be improved, your joint pain, etc. can be So people who look for immediate results for their mundane existence, yoga became a very big attraction and a very big source. Right. But I say yoga is not that alone. Yoga right. is only that of one other type. Uh, one of the tip of the iceberg that you are seeing. Ashtanga Yoga is something far, fast, fast, far, far deep. And it is only a starting point. I think, I think it, uh, this Hada Yoga is a visiting guard of Yoga <laughs> Sastra. <laughs> That's uh, interesting, actually. Yeah, and uh, what, you know, it's very true that, you know, we generally, when we mean yoga, we only concentrate on Hatha Yoga, like you pointed out, because we, it's a result-based uh, appreciation. But yoga is more comprehensive. Uh, that's true. And coming coming back to uh, Ayurveda, and I think uh, right now we are in the pandemic phase. Uh, and um, I think one of the things that came out of pandemic was, uh, in one way, Ayurveda also, uh, the reach of Ayurveda also probably increased uh, during the pandemic times in terms of immunity boosters, various uh, uh, practitioners of Ayurveda, which I also know personally, have been cataloging a lot of cases they have uh, treated very successfully and have got very good results. I mean, of course, Ayurveda was there before that. I mean, every individual household uh, probably has Chavan Prasha and all the Churnas, which is everybody is aware, uh, sort of very aware of that. But pandemic actually, two things came out of during the pandemic, and which is why, uh, which is what I want to ask you. At one point, there was a very systematic cataloging, identifying the results, and then presenting it. There was also a lot of uh, projection of Ayurveda as an infallible science, as projecting that everything, and that also created a confusion. What is your experience about treating corona, uh, you know, uh, treating corona patients, and how Ayurveda has actually helped during these times? What is your experience on that? I think I, this is. Uh, I don't. I, I think Ayurveda has got tremendous potential. Uh, yeah to treat this kind of conditions. Mm -hmm. But the Ayurveda has put also limitation because lack of institutional support system for Ayurveda to do this kind of thing. Right. We cannot expect an individual Vaidya to take all the risky cases and treat. Mm -hmm. And there are no sound institution with all the support needed. And uh, Ayurveda is more, I have seen many, I have myself have treated cases, mm -hmm. mild moderate with success, very great success. But when the, when the acute condition comes where there is oxygen dipping down, unless you have got a proved kind of, there are very few people in areas have shown that there are some paper, but it is not properly codified and brought into the mainstream. Mm -hmm. So that is done. And I, I told you, Ayurveda is a sleeping giant. So we are not known what is the capacity of Ayurveda. We are trying to assess Ayurveda through right. few practitioners. That's not fair. Right. Are not doing, it is not fair for Ayurveda to understand and gauge and uh, certify Ayurveda through few practitioners like me or like A or like BLC. Mm -hmm. We are only a, a projection of certain parts of Ayurveda. There are yet to be more to be uh, explored and found. It is there in many different parts. Mm -hmm. It is all anecdotal, anecdotal now, but right. it is not properly guided. For right. example, my own, uh, there is paper in where the oxygen 
from 47 percent of saturation brought into system article 287, 85, uh, 94, and completely withdrawn from the oxygen support system within a couple of days. So there are papers published uh, recently. So how many people you could do and how you could do if there is a concerted effort where there is nothing else to be done, government should have come forward and taken an integrated approach and tried Ayurveda and tried the immediate acute system. And the emergency support system is very important, which is highly mechanistic, highly mechanistic, highly technology based. That is not aligned to Ayurveda, need not be aligned to Ayurveda. We can also adopt that and use Ayurvedic medicine wherever needed. And all these Rasatra medicines, which are highly particular medicines which mm. people have done very little studies on that. Mm. All its action on at nanoparticle level, how it is working. Mm. There are Ashtari Dravyas. There are Suchi Avarana Rasam, a Rasam which is made out of what? Pricking with a needle to the skin, it works. Mm. But now how many of us know about it? Very few people know about it. So right. that also is Ayurveda. So what I mean, the COVID time has come with a lot of experience. I have been using so many medicines to improve the immunity. People mm -hmm. who have been using is continuously didn't get uh, mm -hmm. this attack. Oh, got attack also was in very mild. So all these things, I am not an institution to take up because I got my own priorities. So I, I feel very right. sad and uh, shameful because these things are not getting documented properly. Right, so right, right. Life ministry has come with some kind of uh, protocols and other thing, and uh, they have documented certain action, but they also could not get into this wide possibilities of Ayurveda where it can be better documented, even better supported. Mm -hmm. Right. For example, I, I have been in the uh, co-chairman of the committee set up by the Ayush Ministry for uh, mm -hmm. taking up the research of COVID. But uh, three, four formulation has gone. The results are not yet to be released. So there are, there are yet to be done, even after 18, year, 18 months of its existence. Oh. So this kind of difficulties are there. Yeah, I think that that's what you point out is very real and uh, sort of having a centralized effort to collate all those things and then give that institutional support is very much important, which a lot of modern sciences have it. In fact, um, uh, I think slowly, slowly there is a recognition and Ayush ministry itself is a indication of that, that, you know, to sort of centralize some agency uh, to look into it. But I want to come to an allied problem. Uh, it's not really a problem, but a sort of an issue which has been uh, there for a while. Uh, even the IMA has talked about it. The issue of surgery within the Ayurvedic uh, scheme of things. Uh, do uh, what, what is the exact nature of it? Uh, is Ayurveda uh, fully equipped with regards to surgery? Uh, what is the what is the state of uh, surgery with regards to the entire Ayurvedic system today? Because that has been a that that came also in the controversy recently. Yeah, I'm aware, I'm aware of there is a lot of noises uh, on that, and uh, so if you see, there are two things you should notice. One thing is that the uh, the concern or the argument or the opposition is mainly from the clinicians, right. not from the scientists alone, who are the working in the area of surgery. So there is a kind of threat. Mm -hmm. to existing uh, pattern of uh, treating surgical because it's a monopoly of uh, some one group of mm -hmm. practitioners. So it has been given to Ayurveda in a very limited way by a reason. Mm -hmm. is being questioned. Let me stop that one point. Second point is that Ayurvedic, uh, Ayurveda is the, fa is the father of surgery. Mm -hmm. Surgery, the concept of surgery came to exist into the globe through surgery. And it was highly, at that point of time, it was highly, uh, highly sophisticated. And there are methods of operating and uh, methods of doing hernia surgery, methods of removing a, a, a dead fetus from the uterus live, I mean, from a live woman. All those things are explained very elaborate and it has been practiced also. And uh, how they used to be, and the eye operations are very, uh, and there are pictorial demonstration of surgical uh, operation being done on eye, cataract operation. And mm -hmm. Susrada is known for that. So, so many interests are there. But some point of time, that branch didn't grow at all in our Salya branch didn't grow. Mm -hmm. And it didn't catch up with the time. So when, when you catch up with the, if you don't catch up with the time, 
mm. you lost you lost so ayurveda also didn't catch up which stood where it was 5000 years or 2000 years back mm-hmm. so one now the problem is we have got 7 lakh practitioners in india ayurvedic degree mm. holders mm-hmm. many of them are uh, ashtadi that is studied 3 years on these branches of surgery and uh, ent areas so mm-hmm. they need little bit of hand holding so that they can become a very well equipped practitioner surgeons mm-hmm. who can serve in the villages of india and other parts of india where there is a need of more surgeons and right. there is no no program by government of india or medical system mm-hmm. to this kind of surgeon which already have and they can not only do surgery they can contribute better because they have got the armory of good medicines which can yeah. be used as pre surgical and post surgical conditions so many time ayurveda is not able to perform they are not able to meet the surgical conditions so that is why government of india after so many uh, stages of discussion with experts and other things came to this conclusion that let us give the 52 or 58 areas of non complicated simple surgical area where these people will be allowed to practice provided they get a proper training for 6 months or 1 year additional to their existing training of 3 years which they are getting right. because the institutions today are very weak their infrastructure are very poor teaching faculties are not competent enough to take up so they need more support that will develop a, that will be first stage of integrative medicine in india <laughs> the good thing there is nothing wrong in that there is there is no need to fight because fighting is because it's like a, you know you know in the street in the street there is unions <laughs> the, the first particular union is only supposed to do the uh, job of uh, head head loading workers they can only in that area they only should do that work others should not come same is the case with the i am we are doing it why are you getting to our area of thing Uh, this kind of, this is not a scientific uh, opposition it's a political kind of opposition to that because they are also studying same thing and mm-hmm. i gave an example you now recently in uh, not recently 2014 mm-hmm. the great saint in mirat i don't forgot his name great saint he is no more he passed away one year back mm-hmm. he had a very uh, very enlarged and uh, inflamed prostate that has to be removed and he is allergic to all kind of allopathy he cannot touch any antibiotics okay. so it was very difficult to do surgery on him so what the surgical surgery he will not survive it was completely blocked then the his uh, his uh, shishyas one of them is a professor in merit medical college and he is head of uh, community medicine and most of them and came together and uh, they wanted to do operation they approached me and approached three four vaidyas we developed a formulation which will work like antibiotic okay and this was this and this medicine was given pre and during and uh, post operation no and antib- antibiotics was given and it is a published paper i am not telling story it's a right, published right. paper which can be received from pubmed publication and he was under i underwent this surgery very successfully he was as good as anyone else after a surgery after prostate and uh, no antibiotic given only our ayurvedic preparation which was formulated by few of us there are three four vaidyas involved and we gave this to him uh, by the doctors allowed because he has no other way is completely allergic to so there was a reason it took mm-hmm. the reason for giving otherwise it would be questioned why you gave even the mm-hmm. consent but he cannot give anything else so to survive this is the only way so this this if you say if you don't use any time you don't know that there is a right. parallel to antibiotic for an ayurveda like that if you do surgical things by ayurvedic doctor while using the modern technology it is not does not belong to modern medicine it belong to the modern technology mm-hmm. x ray belong to modern uh, physics uh, mri came from a defense uh, uh, research right. mri and uh, um, all the ct scan came out of research and all those things came out of research if i can drive a car if i can use a glass i can't i use this uh, other instruments also to operate hey. using the principle which governs that that is the question i want to ask right hey. uh, true and in fact one of the reasons uh, why this book also is very important because it also uh, explores the subject with the help of case studies which you have seen and that sort of uh, you know helps us uh, 
make it it becomes closer to one's understanding okay because of the case studies and i think that is how um, like ayurveda is also reaching a lot of households because of these anecdotal evidences uh, which and also i uh, just out of context you know i also liked uh, an uh, instance in your book where you talked about how the uh, very you know rural or localized people use different medicines and we probably do not even know that so many medicines exist uh, which can treat us uh, something which, which which we cannot imagine so i think what is needed is we have to open up our minds and give it a try give it a chance if there are already uh, demonstrable results but uh, one thing which sort of flows from this is uh, something which you also mention in your book is about the standardization because if we have to sort of uh, you know uh, analyze or we have to sort of even look at these things there should be some standardization and you also mention some problems regarding that uh, you know uh, one of the reasons is that uh, an ayurvedic vaidya has to sort of look into the individual character of the body he also has to take into account the local medicine which is available so there are a lot of variables uh, so what is the way forward in that case if pure standardization is not possible there has to be some localization component how do we approach uh, this issue in a more unified way now these are two separate things the standardization is one thing separate the local localization of ayurveda is something now i would say that yes the desha to yo jandu tasya tajja utadam idam or yasmin desha to yo jadha tasya tasmin tajja utadam idam what it means that every geographical space is uh, blessed by nature with things uh, needed for that place so you don't have to hunt for a medicine or a food to 1000 uh, km away because that area itself is only thing you have to find out so we say that uh, uh, amandaram uh, amandaram aksharam nasti nasti moolam anaushadam ayogya purusho nasti yojaka tatra durlabha what it means is that there is not even a single root or plant which is not medicinal so we can use from local let's say i gave you examples of local localization of using local things and you have to use things according to the uh, condition of the person prakriti of the person vice of the person is from where he is coming what is so duchin desham balam ka so it's a highly localized treatment you have to give standardization is that we get many medicines in the market today which are of no substantiated by sta- particular standard for example you get the same product of uh, uh, same formulation with the different qualities of by different institutions why it is happening can you have a kind of it's very important to save the credential of ayurveda can you bring in standards so we cannot standard molecular level standards at point right? at least some kind of standards hptlc hplc tlc gc as our as kind of things can you put into use and so that a minimum standard is uh, given or the metals and metal preparations are there make sure that there is no residual metal in that there is no metal poisoning happening at the uh, at the end of the production i would say that there should be no that uh, other product should be there in the metal preparation so can you bring that kind of standard so for that technologies are available but we have not applied for ayurveda so if you apply that you will even though there are standards told in ayurveda which is not practically applied and made available to the uh, society so that's what i meant so we have to bring standards in preparations but that preparations alone may not be the uh, pharmacy for an ayurveda vaidya he has to go beyond that preparations also okay. then only he can do a individualized treatment but okay. preparations give him because preparations are actually the formulations told in ayurveda classical are very comprehensive Mm-hmm. so a vaidya with a limited understanding of the science also can treat because it covers a big area right. it does, doesn't have to go to the minute details of understanding that situation any of that group situation can be treated by one formula mm-hmm. so that way the uh, ayurvedic formula helps and standardization is for people to get the right kind of product if i use a basmulam kashayam i should make sure that all the 10 roots are there in the decoction in the expected percentage mm-hmm. that kind of thing and there is no high amount of preservative added than recommended when the people add more preservatives it is actually poisonous to make sure that it doesn't uh, 
distorted in under three years, they add, which is not allowed. If they add little less, the, the product may get deteriorated. So to safeguard, they add sometimes 100 times more. That should not happen. Mm -hmm. That is one kind of without a standard. And whether all the preparations are made as per the classical advice, to check that one system should be there. So the GMP, which is applied, the good manufacturing practice, mm -hmm. applied should be more uh, strictly implemented so that mm -hmm. the preparations are of a basic, basic standard. We right. cannot afford to analyze everything, uh, every alkaloid of a plant, because there are thousands of alkaloids in a combination. Mm -hmm. But if we can have the basic uh, percentage of each preparation or a one marker of each uh, product, that mm -hmm. also can solve the problem. So this kind of in, uh, involvement of modern pharmaceutical science to mm -hmm. understand the uh, safeguard and the standardize, high-risk preparations are most welcome. Right, uh, true. Um, and, you know, uh, just flowing from that, I saw one of the very uh, unique part about your book again was that you were very candid in identifying the limitations of Ayurveda also. I think which is, uh, which is also uh, an indication that this is a science. I mean, if, so, if something is infallible, it cannot be science. It's, it can only be faith. I mean, when there are limitations and when there is further research possible, that itself is a science. And you very... Uh, also candidly say that there are times when the modern the allopathic uh, medicine and the or allopathic way of treatment and ayurvedic medicines can conjoin to give better results uh, i mean uh, have, have you tested such kind of things uh, have you sort of are you actively using these uh, methods of conjoining these two techniques yes sir. i have been i actually work in a uh, hospital which is a tertiary care 700 hospital mm -hmm. called ramaya Mm -hmm. Ramaya has been known for this uh, very one of the most prestigious. And I have got my own ward in that hospital where independently I, my patients are. And many conditions where there's acute emergency kind of situation, I invite them, get their help, and uh, we manage that situation. And the, many of their conditions also come to me after post strike and post pro conditions, mm -hmm. hemiplegia, paraplegia. Uh, some of the gastrointestinal diseases, liver conditions, I treat together. Now, I am publishing a paper of treating a very, very dreadful uh, cancer. Uh, one case we have completely, uh, uh, it is said to be irreversible, completely cured. And uh, the patient is living after five years, doing all his work. Oh. So the, it's an astro glioma. It's a brain tumor, very special kind of brain tumor, which is very fast spreading and the maximum uh, life expectancy after detecting it is only two to three years. And uh, recurrence is very, 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 very often and very, very common. And no life expectancy given. So that patient is there. So we have got few cases like that. This patient completely cured by Ayurveda. This paper is being published. And we have got cases of liver cirrhosis, which is reversed, especially alcohol-induced liver cirrhosis. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have got cases of cirrhosis, non-alcohol cirrhosis, but we prolong life to one to two years with the cirrhotic uh, conditions. So these all need higher levels of uh, very, very, very concentrated effort of surgery and uh, research, which one individual cannot do. We are doing okay. as a clinicians. That this is being done by us. I am a practitioner. I am doing my practice. I am doing it. I am mm -hmm. not doing it as a researcher. Mm -hmm. this kind of, uh, uh, that's what I told you. What we are seeing today, Ayurveda, is only the tip of the iceberg. We are okay. not seen because my limitations are there. Many times, the medicine plants which I need, I don't get simply. Some of the sophisticated methods of preparation, I'm not able to do it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, many things are there in Ayurveda which has to be. And cancer is one area where Ayurveda can do a lot, especially as in the conditions of radiation and uh, radiotherapy and... Uh, right, right chemotherapy and uh, we have got excellent things to as an adjuvant to do in that condition where we can improve the quality of life of people, improve their uh, all their sen sensory and uh, motor functions, improve their digestion, all those things are possible. I have got a few cases, two cases I am publishing. One is the case is a vascular necrosis. Avian is a very clear condition. It is a kind of degeneration and lack of blood supply to the head of the humerus of the thigh bone. Mm -hmm. and, uh, surgery is the only way there you do complete hip replacement. That's the treatment because it cannot be treated. 
<laughs> by Ayurveda, we are completely cured and the person becomes 100% functional. He's running with that feed. That is a big achievement. That paper is also getting <clears throat> published. So there are instances which are, again, anecdotal, but it is possible to do that. And I think integrative medicine is the future of science. Hey. If you don't take, take both together, we have no future. The Ayurveda alone cannot do many things. Right. I, I will I will bet that a bleeding case, I will not touch it. Mm -hmm. Take the best of the places, do water mechanical support we want, do the blood transfusion, do the uh, water coagulant you want to give, do the surgery, do the stitching, everything. That an Ayurveda practitioners can do if trained, but that is not our area of expertise. Why should we do it? Because there is an expertise available already. Right, right. So we can help in that. Or it's a the stroke condition. Is a, there is a bleeding. After the first four days, it's better managed by allopathy where the clotting is uh, being removed and the patient is made uh, to come back to its thing. Then we can do post-stroke. One month treatment will improve the mobility of the patient, improve the hand movement, leg movement. Even we regenerate the brain's uh, circulation back. All those things are possible. So there is also integration possible. And I believe if there is a friendly existence of modern science, medicine and Ayurveda can do a lot good to society and the people and the humanity and to science itself, rather than working, working in the silos and fighting each other. There's no need to fight at all because we are not barriers. We are not <laughs> Our purpose is helping in society, and I am in one area. And can we come together and do something better? In the process, we learn each other. I may learn something from them. They may learn something from you. After maybe 100 years, this both become one. Lord, Lord sure. Lord. sure. That's interesting. And what a wonderful, actually, message that is. That, uh, that's very true that we should not be fighting when the, when the purpose is same, to treat or to serve people. I think there is no need to fight. We can... Uh, learn from each other and I think your book also in a way is a very strong lead towards that that let's, let's not be a antagonists in a sense uh, we can learn from each other but uh, let's not also cancel one science as just anything uh, wonderful on that note I'll just uh, we're almost coming to an end but before we wrap up uh, your book also mentions that you know we right now know very little of Ayurveda there is so much uh, which is yet to be explored. So many texts which probably have, we have lost them, but whatever we have, we have to preserve those, we have to learn from those. Uh, any uh, any sort of uh, message that you want to give to early researchers or students who want to venture into this, any message to those people? As I told you, Ayurveda, Ayurveda is a sleeping giant. <laughs> so it is waiting to be, and if once it gets up, there is no one can stop. Right. That's how kind of potential it has got. So it is the duty of Ayurveda youngsters, especially get get into this stream. Mm -hmm. With uh, my main advice is understand Ayurveda first, then only try to understand other science. If you don't know Ayurveda from its root, you can never help in integration, mm -hmm. never help in the goodness of other sciences. Mm -hmm. Now the problem is that uh, we 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 don't have the foundation. Like it is told in the in the Bible somewhere that in the hurry of uh, building the uh, making the building, the workers forgot to keep the cornerstone. <laughs> the cornerstone is the one when you make the big you know cornerstone is the right. thing which make the building stay. Otherwise, that if cornerstone is removed, the building collapses. So in the hurry of understanding other sciences, we forget our science. So if I have got any strength. My strength is my knowledge in Ayurveda, my experience in Ayurveda. Right. And because of that, I am able to relate with uh, any other sciences. So, so foundational principles of Ayurveda is the, found, is, the, is the sacred part of Ayurveda. If you know, Yasmin Nade Sarumidam Vijnanam Bhavadi, Vijnadam Bhavadi, Tasmin Pravartanam Kutyala. That is what Veda says. By knowing what, we can know everything else. <laughs> Go and know that first, so that you can know other things. So don't start from the periphery, start from the root. And go to the branches, you will be able to reach. And you have to nurture the root to grow the plant. By, by nurturing the leaf, the plant will not grow. So true. That's a wonderful message. And I think all of us uh, would have listened to it. I think the book also, uh, you know, is a, is a strong 
case to understand the foundation when i read it i was so much more clear about what ayurveda is and how uh, how what are the methods and in a way that is very convincing because once uh, the best part of the book it is very flowy it is very easy read even if you are completely unaware of any medical jargons uh, rest assured they won't be bothering you uh, it's a wonderfully easy read anyone can pick up in fact very interestingly sir also tells us that if you are a cynic if you are a critic if you are a follower how you can expect this book to move ahead that's a very interesting part which i uh, liked about it uh, thank you sir for a wonderful interaction with us uh, thank you for a wonderful book i'm sure this book uh, would be very much needed of contemporary times it is a very humble book in a sense that it accepts what reality is and makes a plea for all of us to at least consider a science which has survived for so many years so i will urge all of you to read this book the link of this book will be in the description section so buy this book uh, tell us what you feel about the book tell us what you feel about our interaction comment us in the comment section if you like this video please share among your acquaintances please share as much as possible more important share the message that Uh, if at all you want to learn or even if you want to criticize something at least make an effort to understand what it really is before you actually venture into criticizing it or canceling it so uh, read the book subscribe to our youtube channel for more such interactions uh, and more updates regarding mimamsa and thank you sir once again for being with us today it was great pleasure to have you thank you so much i also enjoyed i enjoyed and i am so happy that mimamsa foundation doing this yaman work of reaching the message of goodness of indian science to so many people it is the need of the time and uh, you and your wife who is a sanskrit scholar i am so i am so happy to see that how a couple and uh, forming a big team to get more people attracted to this indian science thank you thank you thank you so much.